Greetings again, friends. Well, we are going to do something in a follow-up from the last video that I just did. It got me thinking about an article that I wrote, and it compares three key philosophies. Now, all of these three philosophies are tied in to where I ministered, and I will get into this in just a moment. So hang on. Now, if you were with me last time, we talked about higher education. And the higher education should be what you are considering. And it will help you. In this time where people are considering more education, I know that School is about to begin. Another week has passed since the last time that I recorded and posted. And, and so I know we're getting close to this time. So it, it led me to think more academically and to this article I'm going to read. Now, in my book, The Virginia Tech Tragedy and My Personal Tragedy, Lessons to Learn from an Insider and from Scripture, I wrote, of course, in the book, the story of what happened to me in the aftermath of that shooting there on 4 and then the lessons that we need to be learning to prevent these things from happening. And one of the things that God led me to write during this time uh, was an article that I wrote in 2009. Now, I was still in the midst of a lot of things happening. That was before the time I was wrongly put in jail uh, and I, when I wrote this, but it was after another shooting had taken place. Uh, in the book, by the way, I have appendices, and I'm reading this article from the book because in the appendices I do different things, and I, I was writing blog articles uh, while I was writing the book, and so I included a selection, I think, of 22 of them in the book. And I've already done videos on some of these, too. But this is one that I thought was really important and ties into the last video. So I'm going to read this article written 111509 called Radical Christianity. I say, I trust this article will help you who are reading to think with me about a very important subject all tied to Virginia Tech. Tragedy has brought me to the point of sharing this more publicly, and we all can learn if we seriously think about what I am explaining here. Having observed much of the tragic circumstances surrounding the Fort Hood massacre, and as we have learned more about the shooter, Nadal Malik Hassan, I am compelled to write this particular article today. Now, if you aren't familiar with that, uh, down in Texas, there was a shooting massacre, the worst military shooting massacre uh, at, at, like this took place down there. And... <clears throat> The interesting fact of that is that this shooter was tied to Virginia Tech. And so that's kind of what got me thinking about these three philosophies and how they all relate. So just hang on here and listen as I say. Uh, there are three philosophies of life that can be seen reflected in the lives of three figures, all tied to Virginia Tech and related to events over the past 31 months. One, radical Islam, which kills. Two, radical secularism, which feels. And three, radical Christianity, which heals. After 9-11-01, most of us came to understand in a greater and more real way than ever before that there are philosophies of life which threaten the very physical life of us all. 
Islamic jihadism is a religious philosophy that seeks to control through violence. Now, let me stop just a minute here. I, I think you probably would want to go back and look at the video I did called Faith and the Power of Prevailing Prayer that is tied to 9-11-01 and a prayer request that came to me that was answered relating to Osama bin Laden. You can go and see that video and you might even go and look at, as I'm talking about philosophies, three philosophies here, I've done a couple of videos talking about different things with philosophy. Philosophy is the, the study of, of wisdom. And so people are trying to understand life and be wise in their life and follow a certain belief system. And I did one called The Philosophy of the Kingdom, which is an interesting video that you should go watch that compares different philosophies uh, there. And uh, that's on a different line of thought. I did one called The Philosophy of God, which also looks at something very interesting that you might want to go back and look at also. But here I'm talking about radical Islam, radical secularism, and radical Christianity, tying it all to my ministry at Virginia Tech and what happened with individuals there. Okay, so the Islamic jihadism, which is an example of radical Islam, is a religious philosophy that seeks to control through violence. This is why 3,000 people were murdered on 9-11-01. Radical Islam kills. Proponents take a fundamental approach to their faith, advocating violence to mitigate justice or bring people to submission. Violent actions are often preceded by a cry of Allah Akbar. Followers believe that God is pleased with them, even taking violent actions into their own hands. Now, another thing that led me to this video, too, is that just in the past few weeks, I have learned of this jihadist thinking of radical Islam that has killed a pastor who I even had in a meeting I spoke to in India who now has the, the widow and two daughters without their father because this man was attacked for what he was doing. But I also just learned of an example in Pakistan where two people at a brick kiln had acid thrown onto them and that radical, violent tendency that exists with Islam in some people. Not every person who believes in Islam is radical this way, but the philosophy that is represented by jihadism is radical and tries to force people to do things and hurt them. And in and these two, I found out that these two brothers in, in Pakistan were killed uh, because of the acid that was thrown on their bodies. So, <clears throat> these followers often believe that God is pleased with them and even taking violent action into their own hands. They use terror and they bring people, they bring upon people in various ways the terror that they use to force them into submission to what they want. Another brother that I know in Pakistan is being falsely accused by someone who is maybe trying to cause him trouble related to this philosophy in his mind. Uh, so I know this is out there and we need to understand it and see how it is not the way that it should be. Uh, now, when it comes to jihadism, some even uh, use deferred promises of pleasure to motivate people to follow this radical philosophy. 
Uh, for example, the 72 virgins that they say if you blow yourself up in some suicide bomb uh, or some other heavenly reward that you might get for that. Now, Nadal Malik Hassan followed a radical Islamic philosophy and he took violent action into his own hands. No matter how psychopathic one thinks that he was when he did that. That's clear when you study what happened there. Certainly, his thinking was impacted by his education at Virginia Tech. And as he studied further in the field of secularized philosophy or psychology, just, it just as it was impacted through his turning to jihadism. Now, that is radical Islam that kills. And this brings me to the second philosophy that I call radical secularism. Now, you can find this in the book on page 399 to 401, which is where I'm reading this article from. It's also on my website, www.vtlessons2learn.com. So, radical secularism. I submit that radical secularism is more dangerous than radical Islam and is even often used as a motivation for violence. It directly impacts far more people also. Radical secularism feels. Proponents take a materialistic philosophy of life and religiously seek to exclude religion or any vestige of God from education, the media, the government, or any public arena. Is this not what you've seen in America? Is this not what happens in other countries where they try to say a separation of church and state and expunge God from anything? Or anybody that believes in that is not promoted, uh, even as uh, Ben Stein talked about in that expelled documentary movie he did? Okay, so radical secularism um, is this philosophy that is permeating all of the culture here. And I say this philosophy feels because the focus is on what can be seen or touched. It is at least agnostic, empathizing, emphasizing uncertainty or doubt about anything not physically observed. And it's most often atheistic. Now, if you don't understand those terms, um, Agnosticism just doesn't think you have enough information to believe. Atheism believes there is no God. Uh, so that's basically those two beliefs. And that's what happens with radical secularism when you take God out of the picture. This philosophy looks only to the natural world or the greater universe, which is the current thinking, for answers. And, of course, we're getting some amazing pictures from the James Webb Telescope. Oh, my, just the incredible things that we see in God's design and order in the universe. Uh, and they, of course, don't want to see it that way. They see it as a secular evolutionary development, and that's radical secularism. Okay, so I say here, since the focus is on what can be physically felt, there is little to no help available for emotional or spiritual feelings. Medicine is seen as the primary solution for any problem with the psyche. In radical secularism, each person becomes the center of their own universe. When not tempered by others, this will turn one inward to the point that they eventually act out. This is where Sung Hui Cho was. Now, Sun Hui Cho is the one who committed that massacre at Virginia Tech on 41607. And that's why I'm tying this to Virginia Tech and these three philosophies. Because he represented that his psyche was impacted by radical secular thinking and result in the resulting hypocrisy that he saw in others around him. Now, incidentally, that's also how Islam first began, when Muhammad saw the, the hypocrisy around him and wanted to purify uh, a religion and came up with Islam. 
This philosophy, sec radical secularism, dominates the scientific world and the academic community. At its root is a religious belief in evolution. Now this brings me to introduce the third philosophy, radical Christianity. Now, <clears throat> I could say here, a lot of people think that Christians are radical. And they try to persecute Christians saying that they're just, just as guilty as other religious people or, or radical Islam, and that's just not true. If you go to a radical or fundamental Christianity, you're going to be going by what the Bible says and by what Jesus taught. And that's what I'm going to talk about here. Uh, Christians are supposed to be the followers of Jesus Christ. While Jesus confronted the error of the religious leaders of his day, he did not advocate his disciples taking violence into their own hands. In fact, he advocated loving God above all and loving your neighbor as yourself. Now, I say you can reference Mark 12, 30 and 31. And those verses say, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second like it is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Now, Jesus even said to love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. And that's Matthew 5, 44, which says, But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Radical Christianity heals. Proponents are called to follow all of Christ's teachings and take the gospel of healing into the whole world. And Matthew 28, 18 to 20 says where Jesus spoke. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So, each of us has been given a ministry of reconciliation. So, each Christian has, so they, they, we cannot be passive. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.18 says, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to Himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So friends, we have a ministry of reconciliation as Christians. We know that Jesus came, died on the cross, he died as the substitute for our sins. He was buried and defeated death when he rose from the dead. That's the gospel that heals you, that heals you inside. He comes to live with you, gives you a new nature when you put your trust in him, your faith in, in the gospel itself. So radical Christianity is just normal biblical Christianity and it heals. Now, I say many act apart from the teachings of Jesus. Many so-called Christians act apart from the teachings of Jesus and thus succumb to a secularized religion. In fact, Christians are indeed responsible under God to be radical in this sense, being what they should and doing or living up to what the Bible teaches. This is what I, Charles R. Pugh, have been doing. After 41607, my living out of this faith is what labeled me to be psychotic and to date 
had separated me from my family and many former friends, including many professing Christians. Now, again, I write about my story in this book and I was in the middle of it here and more things happened after and you'd have to read to understand more or watch some of the videos where I talk more about the book and things that happened. But I conclude here talking about radical Christianity and tie something very important that happened there on the campus also. Dr. Henry M. Morris lived out this simple, radical faith also, and Virginia Tech even helped turn the world upside down. Now, he did because of the book that he wrote with John Whitcomb. Both men are with the Lord now, but these men wrote the book, The Genesis Flood, uh, from a scientific and theological perspective, and it, and it turned the world upside down in the sense of what had happened through that book in the academic community, even leading Henry Morris to be said to be the, the father of the modern creation movement and leads to the Creation Museum and Ark Encounter that Answers in Genesis has in the area where I'm living. So I say you should go back and read the 22509 blog, Tragedy, Truth, and Triumph, Henry M. Morris. And maybe I'll do that again sometime to give you more perspective on, on that man and his influence. I say, read Hebrews chapter 11 for many other examples of this radical Christianity, this radical Christian faith. Now, friends, if you go and read Hebrews 11, you will see what happened to the people who really lived out their faith, the persecution that they suffered, the things, the ways in which they were martyred or killed. Go look at the list of people and what they had to endure. If you live your life in the regular way, which is radical in the eyes of the world, they will come at you. The devil will fight you. People will persecute you. Jesus said that, that this would happen and we should not wonder when it happens. We know that uh, Paul even said that, yea, all who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So we know that this will happen, but read that chapter of Hebrews 11 to understand more about living out radical Christian faith. Now, I conclude here and say, if Christians were revived, and I've done that change and revival video, if Christians were revived and living a true radical Christianity, and many will indeed see this as crazy, there would be healing in our land. If Christians do not step up now, then America and the freedoms we all enjoy will continue to collapse under the philosophy of radical secularism, just as many other nations throughout history have. America's founders warned of this reality as well. Selah. Now, I wrote this in that academic setting and dealt with all of these philosophies and academically interacted with them. But friend, that, that is so true. In America, we are at a precipice where if there is not a reviving and stepping up, which I think is happening I see evidences of it. It needs to happen more with professing Christians, but I do see evidence of a reviving even around the world in other countries of, of a philosophy that's different from the secularism that has dominated more of a common sense philosophy and, and not so socialistic in ways in which they're trying to push in this country. So friend, think about that. These three key philosophies, radical Islam, if you take that philosophy as, as fundamental Muslims do uh, with jihadist thinking, they will kill if they take it that way. 
uh, radical secularism feels and look at what it's done in, in messing up the society to try to expunge God out of everything and the control that it has in so many places and what led Sung Hui Cho to do what he did and other shooters. This is, this is part of the mindset, the psyche of all these shooters. They turn inward and then act out. Shoot other people, then shoot themselves. That's an example of the bankrupt philosophy of radical secularism. So friends, we've got to be radical Christians. We've got to live by the Bible. We've got to trust Jesus Christ and follow His way, just like I talk about how this happened on the college campuses when they first were formed in this country. Oh, go back and look at the video where I discussed that in Unified Diversity uh, in the top 10 lessons to learn. There is so much to consider, but make sure that you consider these three philosophies and you choose radical Christianity, which heals. Like this video, share it with others, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you'll be ready for the next video as God leads me. Thank you for watching.